Oh, here she comes. All right, guys, large orange sulfur, female, and has made short work of this one little mare stem. This baby mockingbird just ate a big old spider. Hey, Keys Mods fans, this is David Fine, and I'm gonna show you today some of our butterfly activity that's going on right in our backyard. We've got a ton of things laying eggs and including some pretty cool South Florida specialty butterflies and a few little surprises. So uh, it's springtime in South Florida and everything's having babies, the birds and the butterflies. So we're gonna show you a little bit of both. Uh, guys, check this video out. All right, guys, wanted to show you Phoebus agarithi, female, laying eggs. This is a tropical beauty, guys. So I've got two of her host plants right here. If she doesn't come back, I'm gonna be so pissed. All right, while we're waiting for our agarithi female to come back, we might just show a zebra. Oh. There's a statira sulfur. But zebras are always around and are always willing to be filmed. Oh, here she comes. All right, guys, large orange sulfur, female. She is laying eggs on, this is black bead. I've had this plant here forever. Um, Hasn't grown very much. It's probably not the right soil system for it or something like that. But when it flushes out this new growth, the agarithi absolutely, they find it, all right? Now the other plant that I have, oh, there's a mockingbird with a, mockingbird with a, is that a beetle? Or is that a spider he's got? Let's see if we can zoom in. Mockingbird's got an insect in its mouth. Of some kind. Yep. Let's see if he'll let me spy on him. I can't really tell what he's got. All right. This big tree right here is a wild tamarind tree. That is... Uh, Lysoloma, oh gosh, I'm blanking out. It's a Lysoloma tree. And uh, very, very common tree in southernmost Florida and in the Florida Keys. And that's really the main host plant for uh, the large orange sulfur most of the place, most of the time. And I guarantee she's been up there laying eggs on the new little new growth mare stems of the uh of the tamarind tree but let's see if we can find some eggs on our or it's a mockingbird what are you doing all right let's see if we can find some eggs on this thing so she's this this thing is pushing out all this new growth And it's good. Now that I'm having a hard time getting my thing to focus here. All right. Now, the eggs of this butterfly are extremely small. And they lay on the very new tips. So this whole, this whole stem right here is a brand new shoot all, going all the way off. All right. This mockingbird, I don't know why he keeps coming over here. Maybe I'm near his nest or something. But he has got, that's a spider. So this mockingbird's got a big old spider. And I, I must be near his nest or something because, oh, there it is. Oh, look at that, guys. I did not see him. 
Look at them. <laughs> Look at the little baby mockingbird. This baby mockingbird just ate a big old spider. Look at that. Okay, so that's why it's always good to be aware of your surroundings, guys. When you're, this is my backyard and I just came out to take a video of a butterfly and I saw this mockingbird just acting really, really strange and it had a spider in its mouth, but it wasn't eating it and it was coming really close to me. So like, that's really weird. Usually they don't do that. They're going to stay away from people, but it was because I'm sitting right here, right in the tree next to me is the baby of this mockingbird and mommy just wanted to feed her baby. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to leave her alone because I don't want to disturb the baby. And it sounds like mom is getting kind of upset here. I'm gonna quickly show you the eggs of this sulfur butterfly and then I'm going to give mom her piece here. Let me see. Real quick here, guys. There is an egg of a large orange sulfur, Phoebus agarithi, on the black bead, new growth. But they will only lay on the newest of growth. Like the rest of this plant, even this stuff here, some of this looks pretty new but it doesn't have that really flimsy, fresh, new growth on it. And that is what they like. Even this is too old. They only will touch. They will only lay eggs on the very, very tip of their host plant. So we've got some great flowers blooming in our house right now. We don't have much of a garden, but my wife does collect orchids. She's got all these baskets hanging in her front yard and these guys just popped out. Nice little flower spike on these orchids. Pretty sweet. The bougainvillea is going absolutely nuts in the front. That is cool. We'd love seeing that. And then she's got these little guys in pots. And I was very skeptical when she brought them home but they're actually doing very well with absolutely no attention whatsoever. So that's my kind of plan. Something that needs no attention and grows like crazy. And then finally, look at these guys. They're beautiful. This is all my wife right here. So, all right, back to butterflies. All right, a couple days ago, this is my Lysoloma habiku tree in the front yard. And a couple days ago, we had pink spot sulfurs going nuts laying eggs all over this thing. And this is interesting because the larvae should not be that large yet. They should, there was only a couple days ago but it looks like because of the absolute lack of self-control of the females, they just lay all their eggs on one little tiny tree. There is literally no new growth left. And it, oh, I just had my hand on a thorn bug. I felt the stickiness on the vine. All of a sudden I hear this clicking noise. You don't want to go. You're just sucking the, sucking the life out of my tree. What a little monster. These guys are pretty decent pests on my uh, butterfly plant here. All right. Anyway, what I was showing you is they these pink spot sulfur larvae must have hatched from their eggs and just gone to town eating all the new growth and I'm looking around for a caterpillar and I don't see one. Well, here's some eggs anyway. 
So it just started pushing out this nice little new little mare stem here. And there's already a bunch of eggs on it. It's the little white eggs on the tips. But guys, there was, there were literally thousands and thousands of eggs laid on this plant like three or four days ago. And now I don't see a single larva. They ate themselves out of house and home. There's no, no new growth and no caterpillars. And look, look at the... All right, so we need to do something about this, guys. This is, this is a big time issue with these, these thorn bugs. All of those little droplets on the leaves, that's all what I believe is poop <laughs> from these guys. And because it's sticky and literally it's sticking to my fingers. And you can see the thorn bugs are literally all over the place. And not fun, guys. They're, they're literally all over this tree and the tree is covered with sticky sticky stuff so i'm gonna go wash my hands and i'm gonna get back to some butterflies so we've got baby bird action all over the place we've got blue jays up here And then, of course, our mockingbird, which was very diligent to let me know she was there protecting her baby. Her baby's down near the bottom. I don't know, man. There's so many feral cats around here. I'm not sure how they're gonna make it. But, all right, I'm gonna try and avoid these guys to the best of my ability and still show you some large orange sulfur eggs. Blue Jays. Yeah. <laughs> Yelling at me? All right, so we got Mockingbird here. Protective mommy. We've got blue jay. You got fish? My son's catching, my son's catching fish. I'll give the birds a break. Lorenzo, what you got here, bud? Little peacock. Little peacock bass? Yeah. Let's see this exotic little fishy here. Let's see him. What you got? Looks like a perch. Kind of does look like a perch. All right, so butterfly peacock bass are an exotic fish species that live in our South Florida, Florida. canal. Florida. Yeah. They were actually brought here on purpose and let go, and now they become a very popular People game fish. People mistake them as with my cichlid. Yeah. So Lorenzo's letting him go, but he's got a couple of fish going here. These are all exotic species, by the way, guys. Yeah. We've got, here, show us what you got in here, buddy. Um, Okay. Here, why don't you let him go first? Wait, I'm gonna show you. Okay. Look at all these. Okay. okay. So we have right so here. So we have number the world exotic, record. The, the world record. The world record. The world cichlid. record Maya cichlid. Okay. Next. So that's up, from like uh, Central America. Next up, we have pretty. We've got a pretty Oscar. Oscar. Very pretty. Okay. These are also exotic species. Yes. Very pretty. Okay. And then finally. And we have another one. Okay, we have Pluto. another Mayan cichlid. Pretty Mayan cichlid. Okay. Pluto blue fins. Blue fins, they are and then very interesting. We have. And then finally. Two. We have one. One? Yeah. Peacock bass. Let, let's show them the butterfly peacock bass tail. Guys, look at this big old eye spot they have on the tail back here. How cool is that? It's and, a pretty fish. All right, then, so these are our, these are our species, our exotic species. All right, guys, this is what I keep trying to show you all. With the blue jays squawking in the background, this is the tip of this black bead tree, and you can see the two little white eggs right there. 
those are large orange sulfur eggs that are laid on the very, very new growth. I mean, it's got, it's got to be this fresh new growth or they won't touch it. So, and raising the caterpillars are all also very, very difficult. This is all they eat right here. If a plant has growth that looks like this, they won't touch it. Oh, a fly just landed. Well, we don't show you a whole lot of flies on Keys Moths, but since this guy just wants to be cooperative, why not? How, how close will he let me get? There he goes. All right. All right, guys. So that's it. I mean, I don't know how many uh, large orange sulfurs will go through on this new growth. You can see when they find it. So this is a little tiny, little tiny shoot that's coming up and there's an egg on it. You know, when that little egg hatches, it's going to have a couple days worth of food and he's going to have to crawl somewhere else. But yeah, you can see this, this stem here, it's still fairly new, but there's nothing on it. They need this fresh new growth just like that, or they won't touch it. Oh, Lorenzo is on. Did you see that? I saw that. All right, Lorenzo's got a fish, guys. Let's go see what it is. Yeah. So what you got? Nice. A little largemouth. There is a big weed line right there, and then it just drops off that weed line. Yeah. I casted this, I casted this um, bluegill. Yeah. Oh, it's barely on. It's not even on. It's literally not even on. Get him. Look at that. Look at Sweet. That. It's not, it wasn't even hooked. Barely hooked. It, was, it wasn't even hooked. Hook came right out. Let me see him, Lorenzo. Nice fish, man. Yeah. I knew All right, so this is our, our native species. First native of the day. You're going to let him go? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So we've got, we're, we're catching release here, guys. But Lorenzo's trying to do a little bit of exotic control here. All right. Nice bass, dude. You've got a pound and a half. Two pounds. Two pounds-ish. While I'm showing you uh, sulfur eggs, figured... I might as well show you orange barred giant sulfur eggs. This is a candlestick cassia, cassia alata that I have back here by the canal. And you can see that a female giant, uh, uh, orange barred giant sulfur has found it and has made short work of this one little mare stem. So out of those dozen eggs or so, I don't know how much Oh, wow. Here's another mare stem with another dozen eggs. <laughs> so, um, out of all these, only a very few of these caterpillars will get through their life cycle because there's just not enough food. Just like the other sulfur species, uh, these, these large pyarids are very particular about what they'll eat as a caterpillar. And this leaf right here is too old. They won't eat this. This leaf is too old. The only, they're, yeah, they're very picky. The only thing that they'll eat is this new fresh stuff that comes out like this. And this, this plant right here just doesn't have a whole lot to offer. So what'll wind up happening, these guys will hatch and they'll be fine for the first three or four days. But as they start to grow, well, there's another little mare stem popping out right there. We'll see how much leaves are actually on it. But you can actually see that this little tiny little mare stem already has eggs being laid on it. Those little yellow things are, are eggs already. So what will be interesting to see is how, how many caterpillars can actually get through on this. I'm venturing to say only one because one or two. Because what will happen is, you know, there's 30 eggs on this plant. And actually, I'm finding more eggs. They're actually laying them on the tips of this stuff, too. And they won't eat this. These eggs will hatch, and they'll just start walking around and hopefully find something that looks a little bit more like that. Uh, these, these leaves are too old. But there's...
probably upwards of 50 eggs on this little plant. And that right now there's only enough biomass on this thing to sustain maybe two caterpillars. So uh, it'll wind up being a cannibalism situation very soon. They actually wind up eating each other. Once they, once they run out of food, they will start eating each other. So sulfur caterpillars are little monsters, to be honest with you. <laughs> There's eggs all over this thing. And to, final it, to finalize things, guys, I figured while I'm showing you all of these sulfur egg situations in the backyard, how could I not show you that my coin vine uh, this is the Statira sulfur host plant. And the new growth of this plant is ab absolutely peppered with eggs everywhere. And so we have Statira in our yard all year long, all 12 months. As long as this stuff continues to push out new growth, Statira are here. They find it. They lay tons of eggs and they live happily ever after. But boy, oh boy, there's a ton of them. And uh, <laughs> I don't see any caterpillars. I don't know what's up with that. But, oh, there's one. There's a little caterpillar. But you can see every, every, single, every single little stem has eggs on it. And this is a little bit more of an established uh, host plant situation, so it actually has the biomass to house a number of them. It's a pretty big vine here. This is big, big woody vine that we keep cutting back. Hopefully it doesn't grow too far over the neighbor's fence. And um, we have sulfurs here all year. This is, this is literally enough to sustain a, a, a population here all year long. And that's pretty cool to have that in your yard. All right, guys, that's about all we have for today. Hope you learned something and just enjoyed our backyard. We're enjoying our backyard. We're enjoying our canal. My son is anyway, uh, checking out all the exotic fish in our South Florida canal. Uh, but we've also got all these butterflies and hope you loved the video, guys. If you did, give me a thumbs up and it's very, very important. And drop a comment down below. Uh, it helps our channel out when our viewers respond and they comment and they, they interact with the channel however you see fit. Um, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment down below. What would you like me to hunt for next? Or if you learned anything. And so, uh, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.